Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamid Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa was congratulated by U.S. President Donald Trump on the signing of the peace declaration between Bahrain and Israel. President Trump expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, hailing Bahrain's efforts to reach this agreement. In a phone call to His Majesty the King, President Trump praised Bahrain's peace approach, which will encourage all to engage in the peace process, thus ensuring security, stability and prosperity for all countries and people in the region. His Majesty the King said peace represents a strategic option for Bahrain, stressing the kingdom's vision, which advocates understanding, dialogue, cooperation and coexistence between all people and cultures beyond all tensions. His Majesty the King thanked the U.S. President, commending his efforts in this regard, pushing the peace momentum forward in the Middle East towards a more prosperous and stable future. The President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, receives at the White House the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, on the occasion of his participation in the signing ceremony of the Declaration in Support of Peace between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the State of Israel. The U.S. President expressed appreciation to His Majesty the King for his wise vision and keenness to promoting peace, stability and prosperity in the Middle East, praising the historic friendship and strategic partnership between the two friendly countries. He also welcomed the signing of the declaration, considering it a historical achievement in the path to achieve comprehensive peace in the Middle East that fulfills the aspirations of its people. The Minister of Foreign Affairs valued the efforts of the U.S. President and his administration to achieve such historic step that paved the way to establishing peace in the region. He also praised the bilateral cooperation in all areas and commended the role of the U.S. in maintaining security and stability and combating terrorism in the region. The two sides discuss areas of joint cooperation between the two friendly countries and ways to enhance and develop bilateral coordination to serve their common interests in addition to the latest regional developments. The meeting was attended by the U.S. Vice President Mike Pence, the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, the U.S. Secretary of Treasury Stephen Nuchin, the Senior Advisor to the U.S. President Jared Kushner, and a number of officials in the U.S. Administration. The Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United States of America, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for International Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and Ambassador Huda Nunu also attended the meeting from the Bahraini side. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, delivered a speech on this occasion. Mr. President, the First Lady, Prime Minister, Your Highness, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Today, today is a truly historic occasion, a moment of hope and opportunity for all the peoples of the Middle East, and in particular for the millions in our younger generations. The declaration supporting peace between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the State of Israel is an historic step on the road to genuine and lasting peace, security and prosperity across the region and for all who live there, regardless of religion, sect, ethnicity or ideology. For too long, the Middle East has been set back by conflict and mistrust, causing untold destruction and thwarting the potential of generations of our best and brightest young people. Now, I'm convinced we have the opportunity to change that. Today's declaration was made possible by the vision, courage, and commitment of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, who, supported by <laughs> supported by the people of Bahrain, has protected, institutionalized and enhanced Bahrain's centuries-old spirit of coexistence and harmony, 
and has the wisdom to recognize that genuine cooperation is the most effective means to achieve peace and to safeguard legitimate rights. Thank you, Your Majesty, for this vision of peace for the region based on trust, respect, and understanding between all faiths, races, and nations. To our brothers in the United Arab Emirates, I congratulate you on your own momentous peace accord being signed today with Israel. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed has shown great leadership and foresight to make peace possible and secure a brighter future for our region. For the State of Israel and Prime Minister Netanyahu, we welcome and appreciate these steps from you and your government, recognizing that enduring peace and security is only possible through a genuine engagement that protects the rights and interests of countries and peoples in the region. In particular, I want to express my deep appreciation to President Donald Trump. and his administration. Mr. President, your statesmanship and tireless efforts have brought us here today and made peace a reality. And to Secretary Pompeo, Senior Advisor Jared Kushner, and Special Representative Evi Brikovitz, who have and others, many others, who have carried out their mandates with dedication and skill. Ladies and gentlemen, today's agreement is an important first step, and it is now incumbent on us to work urgently and actively to bring about the lasting peace and security our peoples deserve a just, comprehensive, and enduring two-state solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict will be the foundation, the bedrock of such peace. We have shown today <laughs> we have shown today that such a path is possible, even realistic. What was only dreamed of a few years ago is now achievable, and we can see before us a golden opportunity for peace, security, and prosperity for our region. Let us, together and with our international partners, waste no time in seizing it. Thank you. As for the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, he said that peace calls for courage and that the advancement of nations requires dedication and perseverance. This accord opened up prospects for a comprehensive peace in the region. Said the Hudur, in the Salam Yahtaj ila Shaja'a, wa Sana'at al Mustakbal. تحتاج إلى معرفة والنهوض بالأمم يحتاج إلى إخلاص ومثابرة لقد أتينا اليوم لنقول للعالم أن هذا نهجنا السلام مبدأنا وما كان ومن كانت بداية صحيحة ستكون إنجازاته مشرقة بإذن الله شكرا جزيلا Thank you Mr. President Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen Peace requires courage and shaping the future requires knowledge. The advancement of nations requires sincerity and persistence. The President of the United States, Donald Trump, said that this day marks the dawn of a new Middle East and is a major stride towards achieving peace and stability.
We're here this afternoon to change the course of history. After decades of division and conflict, we mark the dawn of a new Middle East. Thanks to the great courage of the leaders of these three countries, we take a major stride toward a future in which people of all faiths and backgrounds live together in peace and prosperity. Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain will establish embassies, exchange ambassadors, and begin the cooperate and work together so strongly to cooperate as partners across the broad range of sectors, from tourism to trade and healthcare to security. They're going to work together. They are friends. Together, these agreements will serve as the foundation for a comprehensive peace across the entire region, something which nobody thought was possible, certainly not in this day and age, maybe in many decades from now, but one founded on shared interests, mutual respect, and friendship. To our honored guests from Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain, congratulations on this outstanding achievement. Congratulations. The Prime Minister of the State of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, also delivered a speech on the occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, this day is a pivot of history. It heralds a new dawn of peace. I am grateful to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed of the United Arab Emirates and to you, Foreign Minister Abdallah bin Zayed. I thank you both for your wise leadership and for working with the United States and Israel to expand the circle of peace. I am grateful. I am grateful to King Hamad of Bahrain and to you, Foreign Minister Abdul Latif Al Zayani, for joining us, joining us in bringing hope to all the children of Abraham. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, issued a statement on the occasion of the signing of the Declaration of Peace between Bahrain and Israel. He said that this agreement is a historic step to achieving peace in the Middle East, and it is an exceptional and courageous move to enhance the security and stability in the region, as well as maintain the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people. The minister praised the wise vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to end the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and hailed the role of the U.S. President Donald Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in maintaining international peace and security. He affirmed that Bahrain will remain a land of peace and coexistence, bringing together people of different religions and faiths. The minister congratulated the UAE for the signing of the peace deal with Israel and expressed aspiration that this agreement will enhance peace, security and stability. The ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United States, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, praised the historic and courageous step taken by the Kingdom of Bahrain through signing the declaration in support of peace between Bahrain and Israel, which reflected the wise vision of His Majesty the King and his foreign policy that is committed to the principles of international legitimacy, maintaining security, respecting sovereignty, and good neighborliness. The ambassador noted that the Kingdom of Bahrain's decision to sign the declaration stems from its keenness to protect its supreme national interests without compromising its national Arab and Islamic principles. He stressed Bahrain's commitment on the two-state solution, including the establishment of an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital, according to the Arab Peace Initiative. He added that the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain, through the establishment of diplomatic relations with Israel, will spare no effort in supporting dialogue, bridging views, and pushing the peace process forward to build on the great efforts exerted by the Kingdom of Bahrain, which included hosting the Peace to Prosperity Workshop last year. The ambassador stressed the importance of strategic partnership between Bahrain and the U.S. to enhance bilateral cooperation in various fields to serve the common interests of the two friendly countries and people. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawziya Zainal, congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the historic occasion of the peace declaration signed between Bahrain and Israel. She affirmed that this step stems from the framework of the Bahraini sovereign and national right and the supreme interest of the kingdom, which is a courageous step taken by His Majesty to support peace in the region. She emphasized that the declaration will pave the way for a new phase that is based on joint action to ensure the peace and stability of the region's countries. 
She added that Bahrain adopts a constructive policy to support reconciliations to reach settlements. Zainal said that the declaration will support the kingdom's efforts to support the Arab and Islamic nations at the forefront of which is a Palestinian cause which is considered a priority to the kingdom to end the Palestinian-Israeli conflict towards the establishment of an independent, stable and prosperous Palestinian state. She reiterated the kingdom's unwavering supportive stance to the brotherly Palestinian people. Zainal concluded by saying that this step will create substantial changes to the Middle East economy and security. Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion of the signing of Declaration of Peace with the State of Israel, stressing that this declaration is in line with His Majesty's directives to promote peace and coexistence in the world, and his commitment to the importance of intensifying international efforts to end the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Al Saleh added that the Kingdom of Bahrain is a sovereign state and takes its decisions based on its national and Arab principles and its supreme security interests and stress the Kingdom's commitment to the Arab Peace Initiative, the decisions of international legitimacy and its support for the efforts of all Arab partners in seeking a peaceful solution that protects the brotherly Palestinian people. He stressed that Bahrain is also committed to its continuous and supportive approach to the efforts that empowers the Palestinian people to advance their capabilities and to enhance their resources to achieve their legitimate aspirations. Al Saleh called on everyone to support the Kingdom of Bahrain's efforts in the peace process in the region. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, welcomed incoming travelers into the Kingdom of Bahrain via King Fahad Causeway, whose travel will be eased by accepting coronavirus COVID-19 test results that have been conducted by the relevant authorities in Saudi Arabia within 72 hours of arrival. He said that coordination with Saudi Arabia is ongoing to electronically connect to the test results there with the ones that have been conducted here in an effort to make traveling easier. The Kingdom of Bahrain announced today the entry procedures for those arriving to the Kingdom via King Fahad Causeway. The procedures include undergoing a compulsory coronavirus PCR testing at the King Fahad Causeway at the cost of 60 BD, downloading and registering the Be Aware Bahrain application. All arrivals are to self-isolate until receiving a negative test result. In the event of a positive test result, the individual will be contacted by the Kingdom's health authorities and provided with appropriate instructions to be followed. Arrivals with a positive test result must remain in self-isolation. Arrivals who have taken a COVID-19 PCR test 72 hours before arrival to the Kingdom will be able to present their negative test results on the Be Aware Bahrain application without having to undergo the mentioned entry procedures. The Kingdom of Bahrain urges all arriving passengers to vigilantly follow all health and precautionary measures and social distancing guidelines issued by relevant authorities within the Kingdom. Masks must be worn at all time when out in public and gatherings must be avo avoided. The Kingdom reiterates the importance of self-isolating and contacting the hotline, 444, if one experiences any symptoms such as headache, coughing, loss of sense of smell and taste, body aches and pains and fever. The CEO of the Supreme Council for Environment, Dr. Mohammed bin Daina, launched the national training course on responding to radiological and nuclear emergencies. The virtual course was organized by the SCE in cooperation with the International Atomic Energy Agency. The first batch has 65 participants from the Interior Ministry, the Health Ministry and the SCE. Dr. Bendena stressed the importance of holding such training courses to prepare national cadres with the highest level of training in responding to this type of emergencies, especially at this stage of multiple global changes, including environmental issues. He said that the aim is to prepare the best response practices to emergencies in accordance with the manual guide and the standards of the International Atomic Energy Agency. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 3,996 with 627 recoveries and 678 registered new cases. 111 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 564 are contacts of active cases and 3 are travel related. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules, follow instructions and avoid public places when possible.